Hey, and welcome back to another Unreal 5 feature video. This one's focusing on using a static nanite mesh for your landscape, as well as going over some uses of vert colors on a static mesh, especially for nanite, where it can be extra dense. I'll also cover a few worthwhile notes and tips that I came across while working on this tube world demo recently. So here we are in Unreal with my little tube world and a whole lot of nanite meshes, very high res as well. As you can see, everything is nanite and quite dense. There's also no texture data except for the uh, ripples on the water. Everything is vert colors, which can make for a very interesting mix with your uh, material, the Unreal material. You can do quite a bit with vert colors. And it doesn't just have to be used as color. You can use them as masks. And instead of just having a brown color in the dirt here, it could be a, an actual rock texture, dirt over here, and grass over here. There's all sorts of options how you could blend it, but I'm going with a pretty simple setup in this regard. Um, one thing, one of the first things you should keep in mind, whether you're doing a tube world or normal flat setup, is uh, you definitely want to break up your terrain, um, mostly for lumen sake. It doesn't like very large, uh, in kind of all-encompassing mesh pieces. It, it can really mess with the lumen scene, decrease the resolution. Um, if I were to take this even further, turn it into a game, I would like to be breaking this into quarters again, just to help with that. Um, another note. Is normally, if you're doing landscape, you could you could probably just keep it flat, um, unextruded. But here, if you can see this, the normals, you get a bit of a hard edge between the pieces, and that's because I thickened this whole thing. Um, and without that, you get something like this, where it is unthickened. But between the pieces, you'll have holes where Nanite's trying to kind of LOD the triangles. And it disappears quite well as you get close. But if you have anything underneath that terrain that's lighter, it would definitely pop out. Um, but you can also hide it uh, with rocks, foliage, things like that. To save yourself uh, from having to add too much density to your mesh. But I ended up going with the thicker one because it also helps with um, with light blocking and since it since it actually has a backside, it can work better in that regard. You also can't use transparency um, or, or masked materials, so these water surfaces are solid. But you can kind of fake the blending, which you don't see too much with how dark it is. But you can fake it with some vert color. You can also add a bit of a variation in the roughness or other blending with other vert color noise. I'm using it here to smooth out the normals as well as add just a touch of roughness. But it's something to keep in mind if you don't need to get too close to your water or especially if you don't have to go underneath it. Um, if you want to see how I set up the terrain to use vert color. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, these hue shift and desaturation are just there for my convenience. Uh, the contrast is nice, though it's definitely better to get it right in your uh, 3D app before you export. Um, I'm using the alpha vert color for that extra uh, kind of roughness detail. It's basically just a noise that covers everything. But um, one odd thing to note, um, especially if you're working with Houdini, to export alpha, uh, it's not part of the vert color system. It is actually an at alpha attribute. So just make sure you save that properly named there before you export, or it just it will just ignore it, and then you'll only have RGB. Uh, but like I mentioned before, you definitely don't have to use the vert color just as a color. A lot of times I'll use like the red channel as a mask for the first texture, maybe the green as a, a multiply, 
add some breakup and tiling or really anything you want. You can go very, very detailed and you can start mixing and matching too. A lot of times it's good to multiply a couple channels together or max them out and turn that into a, a whole new no, uh, noise. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of options there. Here in Houdini, I'll run through a bit of the setup of how I made that tube world and some worthwhile notes for any nanite-based landscape you might want to use in Unreal. Uh, the first thing is a uh, pretty basic height field setup. Uh, there's nothing nothing really special that you need to do there. Um, I've got some simple noise and terracing just to give you some basic features. Um, the road's always good for a little extra detail. Uh, once you start into the vert color, and you want to consider these uh, mask nodes, mask by feature especially, is really, really helpful for catching cliffs, um, AO, got a couple of those, uh, random noise, I used that on the, uh, the alpha channel, as well as a little bit on the color, just to blend in some more variety. AO mask is great, especially at distances, um, when you want to render or do a background terrain. This is really handy for baking that in and, and making use of that. Um, this tiling you could ignore if you're not doing a tube world. I did this just to kind of smooth out the edges so they matched from one side to the other and front to back. Uh, the vert color base I used just a really simple gradient and blended in that cliff layer that was from the mask by feature up above. And you can go considerably more detailed than I did here. This is all just a pretty quick kind of stylized demo as well. But um, just keep in mind that the more detail you want to add and the closer you want to get, the higher resolution you'll need to do, both on the height field with the grid spacing as well as once you convert it over to uh, points of primitives, you need considerably higher uh, vert count to, to really get in a lot of detail. But um, here is one of my quick kind of attribute wrangles of mixing some of those masks from above to get uh, it's just a little extra detail and this uh, quick material is kind of a nice way to preview it disables that checkered pattern and the glossiness you can see a lot, a lot better variety on the surface just because I'm mixing in those pre-made noises I'm just baking it directly into the Vert's uh, color channel, so the SCD. I left this uh, at alpha off because it's really distracting. It actually adds alpha to the mesh while you're working, so I did that later down the chain. But This is the uh, attribute that you'll need to export with if you want to use the Vert color alpha within Unreal. It combines it ex export with the CD. Um, a few other worthwhile notes here. This quadrant groups, um, that's how it's breaking up the terrain. So I'm just doing a really simple position based kind of grouping. So anything that's uh, say on this side of the quadrant would get one number and anything on this side of the quadrant would get another. And there's a lot better kind of more automated ways you could do that as well. But again, this is just kind of a quick demo. Um, let's show you the, the trees here are pretty standard again, um, just a high field scatter. That works really well with uh, all sorts of um, masks as well. I was keeping away from the edges as well as blending out any uh, kind of flat areas, giving them a bit of noise for variety. Um, the tree itself is a really simple mesh, a split, and again, very stylized just for the demo. And like the terrain, I split these up into quadrants, so when it exports, it's not all one massive export, but instead quadrant by quadrant. And it really depends how you're going to use it in Unreal, but I would recommend splitting up even further, so maybe 16 exports or, yeah, it's as low down as you can go. Lumen works much better with more pieces. Um, this big section here is just for the tube part, so you can definitely ignore that. 
if you want to want to keep it flat. And I'll go over that real quick. But this uh, the water surface is worth showing here. Um, it's actually just a flat grid. It starts out the same size as the uh, the height field, and then do a few we'll clean up and uh, up reses, but the main thing we're doing here is the uh, bool. I subtract the uh, terrain itself from the grid and you get the, the individual sections. Um, this is all clean up for that, but uh, do another split kind of just for the export again. So this is one piece, this is one piece, and this is one just again for the export. Um, the UVs I did so I could use the uh, the normal map for the waves. The text density node is really nice too if you have a, a specific resolution in mind for your project. And then of course the vert color I mentioned in the Unreal set. Uh, this is kind of the edge fade and then a couple noise in the green and blue channels just to just to have variety. Um, the main thing that makes the uh, tube world work though is this path to form. I'm going to warp the whole thing together. Uh, the main thing you want to keep in mind here is the radius of your circle. It should kind of line up so it doesn't stretch your grid too much. That's kind of hard to see here, but the, uh, the grid texture is pretty square. Um, that's definitely one nice thing about keeping the UVs on so you can at least tell how big you need to make your radius to avoid the stretching. And then all that uh, tiling cleanup I did up here was to make it so these come together smoother. I used a few bridges and, and um, point blurs both on the, the position and the color just to smooth it in, but I definitely need to work out a better system for that because there's, there's still a fairly noticeable, fairly noticeable line where it's pointed together. And then the whole thing's kind of replicated again, more edge cleanup, um, keeping the, uh, the edges here perfectly flat so when you do your second big tube to form, take a second but you want that to snap properly otherwise you have seams again so duplicating it out to multiple pieces and then blasting away so you just have your original I'll keep those edges straight there and I use this preview ring that basically just duplicates that piece over and over just to uh, double check Again, this is a very high res mesh, so it, it can take a second. But so I'm just rotating 45, duplicating it eight times over. Uh, that's pretty much it for the Houdini side. Um, important thing, like I mentioned, is just make sure you're exporting in separate pieces, uh, splitting out each quadrant, splitting out each um, each piece by materials, so the trees are exported on their own, and the water on its own, and the train on its own, and again split up per quadrant. Now one thing I forgot to mention that's definitely worth keeping in mind, but this method of nanite terrain is definitely kind of unique. It's definitely more for uh, background backdrops and uh, rendering situations or maybe even uh, ship flyover kind of games. If you want to figure out how to make this work with a, an open world game where you're actually down on the terrain, um, two important things to keep in mind is the landscape material won't work, or at least won't work fully. So you can't use uh, like grass types with a GPU foliage. Um, you can still paint foliage on the terrain, or any mesh really. But the, uh, yeah, the landscape materials themselves will work quite the same, or at all. And the uh, collision, um, you'll have to do something unique there, either generating meshes beforehand, or really breaking up the terrain the terrain mesh into smaller pieces so it's easier to auto-generate that um, collision. But those are, the, those are probably the biggest things to keep in mind there. Um, it is pretty fun to work with though, especially the amount of detail you can get and the speed um, with generating terrain, especially in Houdini. It's just 
it's kind of fun good things to experiment with but i hope this was helpful and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments like usual and i'll try to get back to you thanks for watching